So I, I will be recording this uh, session. So later, if you want to uh, to review whatever we uh, uh, discuss, uh, I can share this, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, video recording to you. Okay. Um, so I hope everything is uh, are okay. Uh, again, uh, once you're done with the uh, with the exercise, you can just simply uh, give me a message so that I know if we can move. Uh, we can already uh, move ahead and uh, move on to the next uh, topic. Uh, so I just want to check uh, if you can hear me well. Uh, can you say yes or no in the chat box so that I can see if you can hear me well? Hello? Okay, so thanks, Marie. Marie can hear me. Okay, thank you. How about the, the others? Okay, all right. So, yeah. So, everything is clear. All right, so let's, uh, let's start. Okay, um, first is uh, from... Uh, from this model, so once you have this model, uh, this is the uh, 3D model that I have created for this workshop. So what you can do is uh, from your from your mouse, okay, from the middle button of mouse, this uh, wheel or the roller, you can just simply roll up and roll down. So that one is for uh, zooming. Purpose. Okay, so you can you can zoom the uh, the uh, model view by simply rolling the middle button of your mouse. All right, zoom in, zoom out, and then by simply uh, selecting or press the middle button of mouse, press hold press and then move the mouse. That one is the panning. Okay, so that is the panning. So zoom in, zoom out, and then panning. Okay, so after that, we can also uh, do the rotation by simply uh, press press the control key, press hold. Okay, while pressing hold the uh, control key, uh, press the middle button of your mouse and then move the mouse. That is the rotation. So you can rotate by simply pressing the control key and then move the mouse and that will be the rotation all right now next is uh zoom in zoom out panning and then rotation now in tecla structure uh there are different ways to to uh to do certain things uh but the same output let's say one example is that rotation, press the control key and then middle button of mouse. The other way is by simply uh, pressing control R. If you press control R, so there will be a uh, there will be a command at the left bottom corner. So if you look here, if you look here, so this one is the command. So we can follow uh what will be the command here every time that you have a command there is a procedure or a guide for us to to follow here so here pick pers pick the position okay so let me just erase the drawing and then normal okay so when i press control r pick position so look if i pick the position at the tip of this uh raptor okay so there will be that symbol now if you press the left button of mouse, the left button of mouse, without pressing the control key, so you can rotate, you can rotate the model, and then the middle of the rotation is that particular particular position. All right. 
So now, if I press Control R again and then pick other position, so let's say in the middle of the model, so here, so now the movement in the rotation, it will it will rotate to the middle of the model. Almost okay, middle of the model is somewhere here. Yeah, so that one is the rotation. Okay, so right, so control middle button of mouse. That one is the rotation. Also, control R, pick the view, and then select the uh, left button of mouse. That one is also a rotation. Okay, now the next one is. Uh, Changing the view. So this one at the moment, it's a 3D view. Okay, this is a 3D view. So from the 3D view, basically in Tecla structure, we always, uh, I mean, it's for me, I always personally recommend to, to model that one in 3D view so that you can see whatever uh, model that you have created. Uh, so this is 3D view. Now, if you want to change this one to a plain view or 2D view, just simply press Control P. Control P. So Control P. Yeah. So that one is the changing from 3D to 2D view. So Control P. Control P again. Then it will change again to 3D. Yeah. So control P. Or even if you type control P and then you, you rotate the view, it will it will rotate to the uh, particular view. Okay. So that one is the control P. Okay, so yeah. So any any question from uh, from that? Uh, particular part is there any question so again that one zoom in zoom out panning rotation then control p so that one is a the basic kind of navigation of uh, tecla structure okay so now now that we have this uh, simple navigation so um, next is how we are going to uh, uh, use some tools here in Tecla Structure. So let's say, for example, the there is a uh, uh, if you right click on it, if you select the view, okay, select the view. Selecting the view meaning if you see this yellow color, that's your selecting the view mode. If I select this item, then the yellow color at the border will vanish. Okay, so meaning if you select this one, right click. So these are the menu. If you select the view and then right click, so these are the menu. So you have a different menu if you select the view and if you select the elements. So now, now if you have the, uh, uh, if you have the, if you right click again and then select create clip plane, okay, clip plane. So this clip plane is something like to. Uh, cut the view okay so to slice the view especially this one is very useful if you have a huge model so i can do the clip plane from the top or even from the side here okay so the clip plane as well is something like uh the clip plane is can be uh, can be attained from right click and then create clip plane or if you go to this view there is a clip plane here so that one is the clip plane here as well here clip plane okay so you can do the clip plane from the side from this side even from this side so you can you can use a uh, uh, six clip plane at the same time, okay? But that one is too much. I think one or two clip plane is enough for us to to see what will be our uh, uh, model section is. Okay, so that one is the clip plane.
Now, uh, okay. So in that case, uh, we can now uh, uh, try the uh, uh, what do you call that? The view depth. Okay, the view depth. So for the view depth, if you double click on the view depth, uh, if you double click on the view properties, okay, under this view properties, as you can see here, under this view properties, uh, you can see the name. You can change the name if you like. If you can see the 3D angle. So this 3D angle and plane is similar to our control P. Yeah, see? Control P is this 3D to plane selection. So that one is control P is the shortcut. And then this uh, this angle is the one that uh, you can uh, uh, use to modify. Also, there is a projection here, orthogonal. If you click perspective and then modify, okay, perspective is mostly used when we do the presentation, okay, because this one is a three-point perspective. Orthogonal is more on the modeling and detailing uh, mode, okay, easy to control. Unlike the perspective, this one is something like, see, it's a... Uh, it's a three points perspective and then again the this perspective is very useful if you do the fly or walk through so let's say for example in this exam uh in this model okay so i will press shift f and then pick the position and then here you can see the you can see a walk through something like this so you can make a fly Okay, so that one can only uh, can only it only works if you are in the perspective mode. Okay, so under the perspective mode, if you go to the view, you can see here fly. You click here shift F or fly. If you pick position and then you can move the cursor. So you can make a walkthrough and then save that one in a video, and then you can uh, you can just simply. Uh, record that one for your presentation purpose. Okay, so now uh, next is I'm going to go back to to I'm going to uh, bring it back to the projection orthogonal, and then here you have now this uh, view depth. If you notice here, there is a box here, so the model is inside the box. So meaning that one is our view depth. So if my view depth here, if I change this one to 1,000, or let's say I change it to 2,500, modify. So I can see only the 2,500 uh, level from 0 to 2,500. And this one at the bottom is 1,000. I can see the, the footing. Now, if I increase this one to 6,000 or let's say 5,900, modify, so I will see only the up to second floor. Okay, up to second floor. But if I change back to uh, uh, 15,000 and then modify, so you can see everything. Because that one is the control for the view depth. Sometimes when we do the Detail, details or uh, modeling so we don't need to we don't want to show the other uh, level so we increase and decrease the view depth okay so we can control that view depth all right so that's the uh, uh, the basic navigation of Tecla structure and then if you may ask that one is something like uh, if I press control P it will be on the plane or plan but if you want to see the uh, the elevation, so here press the control I, control I, so you can see the the view here. So if I open the grid A, so this one is the elevation view under the control I. Okay, so again, 
Even this one is elevation view. I can still rotate that one. You can always uh, rotate it and then uh, identify the view that you want to use. Okay, so that one is the uh, basic navigation of Tecla structure. Again, zooming in, zoom out, panning, rotation. Okay, and then also the uh, uh, clip plane by simply right click and then create clip plane. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, let's continue. So, again, under the navigation, there are some uh, uh, options here. Uh, in case that we don't want to see, uh, let's say, uh, I want to hide some elements. Let's say this steel, structural steel, I want to hide this one. So if you look onto this, if I select from right to left and window, cross window, so everything will be selected. But if I select left to right and then select only the, it will select only the wrap pair and then the beam. Okay. So right to left, it will select the uh, whatever the cross cross selection so if i right click and then hide okay click hide so all the structural steel part is hidden but the thing is the mid the center line uh was still there okay so enable for us to return back the uh the elements here you can just simply right click and then redraw okay now uh, if you really want to remove all the, even the center line and all these uh, elements to hide totally, so what you can do is again select and then press the shift key, press the shift key, and then right click and then hide. Okay, again, redraw, select. Shift key, right click, and then hide. Okay, so any question on this? Again, if you want to uh, restore that one, right click and then redraw. So it will. Now, uh, the other way is uh, if you want to select this uh, structural steel and then you want to show only the selected part, you again, you can press the shift key, right click, and then this time you click show only selected. Okay, and then again, if you want to, to unhide uh, those elements, then you can just simply redraw and everything will be shown. Okay. So I hope uh, everything is clear now. Yeah. Next is uh, to see the the uh, the rendered mode of our uh, model. So by pressing uh, Control Control One Two Three Four Five. Okay, Control One Two Three Four Five. So if I press Control One, so it will become the uh, wireframe. Control Two is the Shaded wireframe, control three is a white, and then control four is the solid one, control five is something like the hidden one. But I mean this one it will be it will highlight a pan selection. So it's not there, it's hidden, but once you once you make a selection, it will be visible. Okay. So that one is the control one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, again, 
if I press Control 4, there you go. Now, uh, if you notice here, Control 2, uh, Control 1. So you can see that everything is already uh, wireframe except except for this slab and then the core bell. Because the slab and the core bell, these are components. So if it is a component, it's not, uh, it will not be controlled under the control key. But instead, you can use the shift key. So instead of control 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you use the shift 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here, shift 1, oh, sorry, shift 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, okay. Shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, shift five. Okay, so that one is the uh, how you're going to change the view by pressing the control key and then shift key. Okay, so kindly uh, try this one for the, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to give you maybe a couple of minutes to to try that one. So control one, two, three, four, five, shift one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, you can uh, also do the uh, hide parts and show on the selected. So let me know once you are uh, done. You can type if it is done. Then I we we are going to continue for our next uh, uh, exercise. Okay, so I hope uh, you're done uh, and there, there's no issue. All right, so uh, now uh, what we're going to do next is we are going to create our own model, okay? And then we are going to build this, uh, this model. So I just want you to, to follow uh, me for, uh, for this one. So in this case, we can now... Uh, Select this menu and then create new. Create new. And then under this new, I want you to type type your name. So for me, I will type here. And then any the workshop model. Okay, any the workshop model one. All right. So basically, once you create a new, automatically it will place into the Tecla Structure Models folder. Okay, that one is under the C drive. And then uh, if you notice here, there is a single user and multi-user. So meaning if we have, uh, uh, if you have only one license, of course, you can only use a single user. But if you have two or more license, then you can work as a multi-user. So it's something like a collaboration tool wherein you can, uh, uh, when you create whatever model you create in your computer, then the other computer will see that one. So that one is a multi-user. Okay, so you can only do that one if you have two or more license of Tecla Structure. All right, so at the moment we use the single user and then all we kindly select this create. All right, so select the create. And then the model container and, and save change. Yes, okay. 
So now we're going to create a new model. So we are going to create it from scratch. Okay, so now, once we have this, uh, uh, oh, sorry, once we have this model, new model, so by default, it will, it will create a view with this uh, grid line, okay, with this grid line. So, if you notice here, uh, you can select the grid line by simply selecting this uh, select grid okay then so that the grid line will be highlight now this grid line we can uh, if you double click this grid line so it will show us it will show to us the coordinates or the properties of the grid line so if i press control p okay so now uh, remember the x and y is a relative value and then the z is a absolute value so I want you to modify the X and Y here and the Z according to the dimensions that we're going to key in. So again, let me explain. X and Y is a relative value. So this two is something like always starts from zero. So A to B is, uh, let's say, 3K. So that one is 3K. And then B to C is also 3K or 3,000. So meaning... You can type in the uh, box, let's say zero space 3000 space 3000 or zero space two times 3000. So the output will be the same. Okay, similar thing to the uh, y direction one to two, two to three, three to four. So that one is also a relative value. Okay, it's like a dimension. So now we can modify this uh, value, right? So instead of 3,000, uh, 3, I will put here uh, 5 meters, 5,000 space, 5,000 space, 5,000. Enter. So you have now 5 meters, 5 meters. And then on the Y direction, I will put 5 meters space, 5 meters space, 5 meters. Okay, so I have now the uh, the the modification of the grid line according to the uh, coordinates that we have key in here. Now, if you notice here A B C D, so I am going to add letter D in the label and then enter, so it will be complete now. All right, and next for the uh, absolute value on the Z direction. Let's say I have uh, let's say I have this level, okay, this level. So from from here to here, if this one is three thousand, three thousand, this one is three thousand as well, okay. It always starts from zero. From zero to first floor is how much? Three thousand. So this one we put three thousand space from zero to second floor is three thousand plus three thousand six thousand so this one is six thousand from zero to the third floor or to the roof that one will be nine thousand okay so you cannot uh in in z direction you cannot put three times three thousand that one is wrong okay so in the uh z direction it must be type according to the uh, the absolute value so meaning it uh, always calculated from zero to first floor zero to second floor zero to roof and so on all right so now if you're okay with this one erase and then normal and then now i'm going to change this one to zero uh space space three thousand 
space 6,000, space 9,000. Okay, and then here, the Z, it will be FFL, FFL, first floor, second floor, and then roof, and then enter. All right, so now we have already done the, uh, the coordinates of our uh, grid line. And then if you notice here, there is a uh, box here, which is the, uh, uh, what do you call that? The uh, uh, area of view, okay? So the view area is this box. So if you want to expand to the, because at the moment, the our uh, model area is up to here. Now that, that we expand a bigger uh, size of uh, grid line, so we need to expand this area as well. So select the view, right click, and then fit work area. Okay, so there you go. So now it's fitted. Now the use of this uh, work area is something like if you have a huge model and then you want to work only in the particular area. So you can go to this work area and then select using two points. So here you can select that two points and then here whatever it, whenever it zoom in and then if you go go back to home base the home will be that particular work area okay so you can concentrate only in this area especially if you have a uh, a bigger or a huge model okay so right click fit work area then it will expand again okay is there any question on this uh can you can you try this one in your uh model so maybe again i i, I will do the recap again from uh from from uh, grid line okay just simply select the grid line and then you can just simply type here uh three times five thousand or five thousand space five thousand space space five thousand okay or you can just simply follow this value so that we're going to have the similar value in our model. So I want you to, to have this one in your model. So kindly, uh, kindly do this one and then modify to have this and then right click fit work area. And then once you have this one, you can, uh, we can now proceed in our modeling. So I hope uh you can follow this one please let me know if you have any question or if you are done this one and then we can move forward to the uh, next topic please let me know if you are done and uh we will uh we will continue Okay, so uh, have you finished this uh, grid line? Shall we continue? 
Can I get uh, an answer to the chat? If uh, are you still there? Okay, so uh, how about the others? Are you done with this one? All right. Very good. Uh... Okay, good. Now, uh, let's uh, continue. So in this case, uh, we can now select the grid again, select the grid line, and then we're going to create the, the view for each uh, grid. So this one is simple because all you have to do is to select the grid line, right click on it, and then here there is a create view along grid line. Okay, so if I click here, create view along grid line, so automatically it will. Uh, we can just, it will show the dialog box. Uh, this dialog box will, uh, we can set up the grids, but we're going to use at the moment the uh, uh, the default one. All we have to do is just simply hit create. Again, again, uh, before I create, select the grid line, create view along grid lines, and then hit create. So here, as you can see here, it will create now uh, grid A. So as you can see, that is the elevation. This is the first floor plan and another elevation. Okay. So we don't need to create that one manually, but uh, automatically the system will create according to the grid line position. Now, if you create again, so it will be duplicate. So you have a, a grid one, grid 1.1. So instead of deleting it one by one like this. You can just simply uh, delete everything. Yes, and then create again, and then you have a, now a fresh grid views, okay? So if you mess up with the creation of the view, you can delete and then create a new exactly. one so that you, you're going to have a, a fresh uh, uh, grid views. All right, so now uh, let's continue. Now that we have uh, grid views, again, when we do the modeling, when we do the modeling, uh, as I've told you, I, you, I recommend to model this one in a 3D view, okay? Especially if you're an experienced one. But again, uh, I don't have anything against if you model that one in 2D view. But, uh, you know, Nowadays, the trend is 3D, so we need to go to the 3D modeling since we're talking about a 3D modeling software. So you must model that one in 3D. So as Tecla Structure, that one is the way we do here is mostly real in the real 3D. So uh, now we're going to add a, uh, a pad footing, okay? So pad footing. So what is the pad footing here? You go to the concrete. Under this concrete, you can see that there is a uh, different, uh, uh, what do you call that, elements here from the column, beam, panel, slab, and footings. So if I select the footings, so on the right-hand side, you can see the footing properties. Okay, on the right-hand side, you can see the footing properties. So here, under the footing properties, we have the profile. So the profile is parametric. So parametric meaning I have the uh, the shape here. Let's say this one is a rectangular one. Then you can just simply put the value, and then automatically that one will be your shape of your uh, or the size of your uh, footing. So since this one is a rectangle, so let's say I'm go. Let's type one thousand five hundred by one thousand five hundred. Okay. So one point five meter, point five meter size of the pad footing. Okay, and then uh under the uh class select one all right select one and then here as you can see here the top 
is 0. And then the bottom is negative 7.5. So meaning negative 7.5, it's something like uh, the height of the footing. So if I type here uh, negative 800, that will be the height of the footing. So let's say start with the cast in place. And look, if I click on the, if I click on this point, I'm going to have this pad footing. Yeah. So the pad footing already uh, specified here. Okay. So this is the pad footing. So now, once you have this uh, pad footing, okay, so this pad footing is not just a 3D view, but uh, if you right click on this one and then inquire part, so you can see the value. Okay, you can see the, uh, uh, the information here, the size, uh, the volume of the concrete, and then the, uh, the weight. Okay, so that is the pad footing. So now, once we have this pad footing, okay, we can just simply, again, uh, in pad footing, just simply select this one and then pick the point, and then you have the pad footing. Okay, so you, you can just simply click the point and then you have that. Now, if that one is, since this one is similar, we can just simply select all the pad footing and then right click on it. Right click, copy special, linear. So here I need to pick two points to indicate the direction. So the direction is going to the letter D. So meaning from picking this point to this A to B, it will give me 5,000 here. And then how many copies? If I say three, copy. So now I copy the pad footing. So I will just delete the unnecessary uh, pad footing here. So now you have the pad footing. Okay. So can you uh, can you make that one? Just simply create uh, create the pad footing again. This is the uh, properties of the pad footing. You can. Uh, uh, follow these uh, properties of the pad footing and then pick the position. Okay, pick the position of the pad footing and then copy. So, again, quickly, again, select the pad footing. I have the, uh, the position, I have the uh, uh, what you call that, the properties. So, pick one, two, three, four, and select all the pad footing. Right click on it and then copy special linear. So from A to B is going to X. So from A to B is 5,000. I can type 5,000 here. And then how many? One, two, three. I will put three here and then copy. Click here, copy. And then remove the unnecessary pad footing. All right. So that one is the pad footing. So uh, I hope you got that one. So kindly. Do the pad footing and then let me know once it's done so that we can, uh, uh, I can continue with the column. So after the pad footing, I we're going to do the column. Let me know once you are uh, done. Uh, like what you have typed here, you type done. So at least I know that. Uh, you finish the uh, the pad footing.
Okay, so uh, uh, okay, Anushka done. Yeah. So, all right. Please let me know if you have any question. Uh, if there is something like uh, not clear to you, uh, let me know so that I can uh, explain it more or I can repeat the things. So, how about the others? So, Anushka already done. Okay, so uh, yeah. All right, so now uh, we can, we are going to add now the column. So similar to similar to uh, footing, actually the column has the same properties. So what I mean as the same properties because the footing, if you notice here in the footing, we establish the top and bottom position. So in the column, similar similarly. Uh, there is a top and bottom position. The only thing is the bottom is zero here, and then the top will be 3,000. Okay? And then the column profile size is 400 by 400. The class, maybe I'll choose the uh, color uh, number 12 for the class so that the color of my column is color uh, violet or, uh, yeah, uh, or magenta. And then... Uh, you have now the bottom, you have the top and bottom, and then I change this one to cast in place. So look, once I pick the same position, so the column will be placed there. So similarly, if I pick on the position of the uh, footing, the column will be placed at the same position. But again, because of the uh, uh, what we have established here on the height, is a positive 3,000 and zero at the bottom. So the, the column will go up, the negative will go down. That's the reason why in our uh, foundation, it's negative 800. So same thing, what we have done in uh, footing, we can select and then right click, copy. So from this point to this point, to this point, to this point. So this one is similar to the copy multiple. So earlier, when I copy the uh, the footing, I use the copy linear. Okay, so this one, select, right click, copy special linear. So this copy. Now what I did is the other way of copying. So select, right click, copy. The other one is copy special. This one is copy. So copy is just similar to the copy multiple. Yeah. So I just simply pick the correct position and then delete the unnecessary element and there you go so you have now the column and foundation you have the column and foundation now so i hope uh you can you follow this one Okay, please let me know once you are done with this column. And then after this, we're going to add the beam.
All right. So uh, now uh, let's continue with the uh, with the beam. Okay. So for the beam, uh, you can select again this uh, concrete beam. Earlier this column, now this beam. So again, going back to the right hand side, so you can see the uh, the properties here. So let's say uh, the beam will be six hundred by four hundred, and then the class is same as twelve. And then this one is something like a uh, cast in place. All right. So if you notice here that the, the beam, there is no top and bottom. But basically for the beam, you have the end of set and then the uh, end start and end of set. So meaning I need to pick two points for the beam. So you will notice if, uh, if you can see your cursor here on the top of the column. Okay. I'm in the 3D mode. On the top of the column. See, you can see the end point. This is the end point. Just click on that end point and then go to the end point of the other column and that will be the beam. If you click on the next end point, then that is the beam, as simple as that. So pick two points and then you have this, you have this beam. All right, pick two points and you have this beam. Now, if I want to copy this one, if I want to copy this, uh, these two beams, copy to the Y direction, okay? Copy linear to Y direction. Y direction is what? From here to here is 5 meters. And then 1, 2, 3. So just simply copy. So now you have the, you have the beam. And then select this by simply pressing the Shift key and then select one by one. And then I, I'm going to put the value to X direction. So here, X direction. I know that that one is 5,000. I know that that one is 3 as well. Then copy. Then you have now this. So remove the unnecessary beam. And there you go. So it's very quick to add this uh, this beam now if you don't want to use this uh, copy uh, copy functionality it's okay because what you can do is you can just simply uh, uh, do the uh, uh, add that one one by one by simply picking the top of the column so click one then in this column you must double click double click so that here double click and double click double click so that you can be a it could be a continuous beam ah sorry 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 so select then one two double click the no, pop sorry one and then two there you go one two three the reason why the reason why i double click on this one because oh, one click and one click again. One click and one click again. One click and one click again. So it's similar to the double click. So here you can now uh, add that one, one by one. If you don't want to use the copy translate. So here I can copy this one. So any method will do as long as you have the same output, okay? So now the question is, what if what if I want to, uh, uh, example is this one. What if I'm going to uh, pick this beam from this point to this point? That one is also okay. But the thing is that one will be one continuous beam, especially if this one is something like for the preca, so you need to divide this one into two. So what you can do is select the edit, select the split, select this beam, and then pick the middle of the column. Select the beam and then pick the middle of the column. So in that case, then that will be a separate beam. Because we have the option here to split and combine. Okay, so now... 
this is the this is our beam this is our beam now you may ask hey why this one is there is a collision between the column and beam because if you notice here if you calculate the volume of this one there is there will be a duplication of volume this one at the moment it's okay because later on we're going to add a detailing here so the we're going to cut the beam according to the surface of the or the size of the column so leave it for the meantime because uh the, one of the reason is when we do the modeling from center to center uh there are some uh uh, some situation that uh, the the user the Tecla user is exporting the uh, the model. They are exporting the analytical model to a design software. So when you export that one, the analytical model, the node must be uh, connected to each other in the center uh, point or center to center. That's the reason why we have this modeling to center to center. So the the working point must be on the center. But of course, later once we have the uh, uh, once we add the connection, then it will cut accordingly. Okay, so I hope that one is clear. So I'm going to wait for you to uh, to finish this one, and please let me know if again if you have any question or if you want me to repeat something, uh, please let me know so that uh, uh, I don't want to go further unless uh, it's not clear for us. So if you notice here, I make this uh, modeling as easy as uh, possible, okay? So again, let me know once you finish the beam.
Okay, so uh, finished with the beam. Is there any question? All right, so thank you very much. So we can now uh, continue. All right, uh, now uh, what I want you to do is to uh, copy all the columns and the beams to second floor and third floor, okay? Actually, that one is uh, quite simple. So uh, what I want you to do is make a rotation similar to this okay like an elevation and then make a selection from right to left okay so selecting only on only the column and beams okay so don't select the the pad footing select only the column and beams so once you select the column and beams right click on it and then copy special linear so once you copy special linear so clear the uh clear the value here and then uh, we're going to copy uh, to the z direction so meaning i'm going to type here 3000 on the z direction and how many copies i'm going to put here two okay and then simply copy there you go so after you copy this one remove the extra uh, elements this part and this part all right so remove the extra element and i want you to see i want your model to be look like this okay so kindly do that one okay again let me uh let me repeat huh select all the column and beams all right right click copy special linear then put the value on the set direction 3000 number of copies two and then hit the copy and then delete the uh, extra elements here on the right and on the left and then there you go so this one now is our uh this one is our structure so kindly do that one let me know once you are done and then we're going to continue we are going to replace the concrete at the top we're going to replace that one with a structural steel element okay so let me know if we can continue and then uh, uh, we will proceed accordingly
Okay, so uh, done. All right. So we can change now the uh, we can change now the concrete to a structural steel. So let's start with the uh, column. Okay. So even though we model this one. As uh, concrete properties, in Tecla structure, we can easily change this one or convert this one to column. So select, select all the columns. And then, first of all, change the profile. Select the profile. And then under the profile, you can see the I profiles here. And then look for the UC254 by 73. Apply and OK. All right, see? You can see now the profile UC254 by 25473. Now, I need you to change the material. Instead of C40, I will change that one to steel S275. Apply and OK. All right. And then the class number, I will change that one to number 11. And that's it. Modify. Then you now have the column. All right, again, let me repeat, huh? So select only the column by crossing selection from right to left. So it will show you the column properties of a concrete here. First, change the profile. Look for the W or look for the I profile here. And then you see 2 pi 4 by 73, apply and OK. Change the material. So still S27. Okay, and then change the class number to 11 and then modify. So you have now the structural steel. And then the good thing with this one, uh, see, if I click on this, automatically this one will become a steel column here. Earlier, this one is a concrete column. After changing the material, it becomes a steel column. Now, uh, again, for you to for your exercise to continue, select now the beam cross cross selection from right to left and select only the beam, and then again go back to the profile. So this one is just a repeated procedure. Go to the I section. By this time, you use the UB two five four by one forty six by thirty one. Click OK. Change this one to S two seven five. You can type if you know the uh, material. If not, then you can browse the uh, the database. And then the class number, change this one to 12 and then modify. And there you go. So you have now the change uh, element from concrete to uh, from concrete to structural steel. So again, kindly do that one. Uh, I will give you time to do that so that uh, uh, you can you can feel how how does it works and again uh, I'm always telling please let me know if you have any question or if you have any issue in this particular part again uh, let me know if uh, it's done and then we're going to continue uh, adding uh, or con converting this beam to a rafter.
Okay, so shall we continue? All right, very good. So now, um, enable for us to convert this one as a rafter. Okay, if you notice here, this one is one whole uh, beam. Okay, continuous beam up to 5,000. So we need to cut this one into two, and then we need to modify the height of this, uh, uh, the slope. Okay, so enable for us to cut this one into two. Actually, you can, as you can see here on the uh, on the snap snap points here, I have a snap to midpoint. You can snap to intersection, snap to any position, and then snap to the nearest point. Okay, so mostly that one is my setting. But uh, in order for us to to cut this one easily, we can also add this point. Select this point, and then click online. Okay. Once you select this online, it will tell us to divide the line points into number of points. So how many number of points? One, because I want to cut this one in the middle. So if I click from this point to this point, five meters, okay? If I click this end point, look what will happen. So there will be a point at the middle, okay? So you can repeat that one. Uh, you can repeat that one uh, three times. One, two. One, two, one, two. The reason why I put that point is so that when I create the split, okay, when I use this split command, I'm going to select the beam and then select that point. So look, if I select that point, then immediately it will cut into two, divide into two. So select and then pick that point. Select. Okay, if you don't have this point, it's okay because since we're talking about the middle, okay, the middle of the beam. So if I select the beam and then look, look at my cursor. If I put that one here, you can see the midpoint. If I click that midpoint, it's the same thing. Okay, so two things. You can add the points or you can just simply uh, find out the midpoint of this, okay, the midpoint of this beam. Right? But of course, if you have the point, that one is much easier to select. Again, again, uh, let me just uh, repeat. What happened is I just add the point online. So pick the first point and second point. And then with that point, I can just simply split one and then two. Or, or else, even without a point, I can select this beam and then pick, pick the the midpoint like this this one midpoint select the beam and then select pick the midpoint select the beam and then pick the midpoint so that one is same so look if you notice here that one is two five two five two five two five okay now how we are going to make this one as a uh slope raptor so what you can do is this so i think uh better uh you look at to my screen so that you can see what I'm going, what I'm going to do next. So look, <clears throat> I position my view like this, okay, like an elevation view, not actually elevation view, but in the position that I can select all this raptor from left, okay, from left top to bottom right, like this. All right. So meaning 
I selected only the router, right? I selected only the router. Now, enable for me to select only the handle, this handle at the middle, okay? I need to select a wind. Uh, I, I need to select that one using a window selection from from top left to bottom right. But but you need to press the Alt key first. Alt key, Alt. Yeah. So you need to press to select or to press hold the Alt key. Press hold the Alt key and then make a selection. Look. Can you see that one? I'm pressing the Alt key and then make a selection like this. So you will notice that the point here, the handle here is empty. Look, this one is uh, is hollow. And then the selected handle is solid. So once this one is solid, meaning only this handle here was selected or the node here has selected, if you right click and then move linear and then how much? Going Z direction, positive up, 1,000. So move. So it becomes, so if it is negative, it will go down like this. If it is positive, it will go up. Yeah. So now I have this uh, uh, rafter or gobble uh, shape uh, roof. Okay. So no need for me to model that one on the inclined one, but basically you can just simply select the handle at the middle and then move that one up one meter so that that one will be the slope okay uh, kindly try that one and let me know once you're done if you have any question if you want me to repeat let me know as well so that i can uh, uh, explain it to you further then if not kindly continue working on this so once you say that uh, you're done, then I can continue with the next uh, example. Okay, uh, which one you want me to repeat? The uh, the ridge, or I mean the uh, the raptor. Okay. So. So from this beam, okay, from this beam. We want to divide this one into two. And enable for us to divide this one into two, we need to split, correct? So now I have also a tool here to divide into two, add points online. So I need to pick one and then two. Oh, sorry. And again, one and then two, 5,000. So I, let me just do that one only on this part huh, so that you will uh, uh, easily understand this. Okay, so once I pick, once I put the center point, so I can use the split, select the beam, and then select the point, and then it will be split. Okay, you can remove the, the points if you like. Now, once you select these two, okay, I'm going to select the two beam because it becomes two. So you can see that there is a node there. I want to select that node. So enable for us to select that node. I want to press Alt key, alternate key from your keyboard. Press hold okay press hold 
the alternate key and then make a selection. So once I select that one, it becomes solid. This one, the point, the handle here is not solid. So meaning it's not selected. Only the solid one is selected. Okay. Right click and then move special linear. So, ah, sorry. Move, right click, right click and then move special linear. And then type here 1000 to the Z direction, positive, going up, move. Then there you go. So you have now the, <coughs> the gobble and there. All right. So you can repeat the procedure if you like to do that one one by one. Then uh, uh, you can repeat by simply splitting this one. One. And then look for the midpoint. One. Look for the midpoint here. I don't know where. Midpoint. One and then midpoint. And then here, I can select again these three, Alt key, hold Alt key, and then move. That's it. Okay, try that one. And let me know once you're done. Okay, so did you follow that one? Is it okay now? So shall we continue? <laughs> okay, very good. So now, this time, all right, so uh, maybe a couple of uh, model. So if you notice here, what we have done here is just a simple modeling, just a simple modeling. So we haven't done any details yet, okay? So maybe I will add another uh, slab on the uh, first floor. So to add the slab on the first floor, Control-I, 
and then open the plan at first floor. So this time I'm show you, I'm going to show you uh, how to uh, if I have a plane plain view, so I can add the concrete slab here. All right. So select the slab. Let's say 150, and then change this color to 10, and change it to position uh, behind. All right. So just simply click one. Two, three, four, and then middle button of your mouse. Then you have now the slab. All right. Again, for the slab, actually the slab can be uh, the slab can be in a different shape like this. Yeah, but uh, since this one is a square slab, I can just simply click on the <coughs> corner. One, two three, four, and then middle button of your mouse, all right? And then you can just simply copy, select the center of the column, yeah? Oops. <clears throat> if you notice here, if I click wrongly, I can just press Control Z. That one is undo, but even without uh, going out from the command, all right? So now, I have the slab here, okay? So <clears throat> I want you to do that one. Again, control I, under the control I, double click the plan at first floor, and then add the slab. So the slab will be 150 by uh, 150 thickness, okay? So kindly do that one, and then uh, let me know once it's done. To finish to close the slab uh, you need to press the middle button of your mouse so let me just repeat so one two three four and then here middle middle button of your mouse no need to click here but middle button of your mouse it will close the slab
Okay, so uh, let's continue. Um, now that we have this slab, so let's try another uh, uh, slab here on the top. But this time, <clears throat> this time I'm going to use a uh, a floor tool. So because this slab, it could be a uh, it could be a uh, CIP or cast in place. Then the uh, the top one. I'm going to use a hollow core slab, okay? So for the hollow core slab, uh, I want you to select this slab, and then here you can see the floor tool. So before you click on the floor tool, I want you to press Shift key and then Shift. Uh, press the Shift key, hold, and then click the floor tool so that it will open to us the uh, property of the floor layout tool. All right? So again. Again, please pay attention to this. On the slab, <clears throat> under the slab, pull down menu, you have the floor tool. Before you click on this one, press the shift key and then click the floor tool. Because if you just simply click the floor tool, this, this one without pressing the shift key, this floor tool layout dialog box will not come out. Okay? So you need to put a, uh, you need to press the shift key. And then, for the layer thickness, uh, you can go to this uh, uh, to the profile. So under the profile, you will find the hollow core slab and select the uh, P18175 by 12. All right, then click OK. Uh, basically, the hollow core slab <clears throat> has its a standard width, which is 1,200. So the the usage of the floor tool is we don't need to we don't need to model the slab one by one and copy array but instead we will just simply select the uh, the uh, the area where the where the uh, hollow core will be placed and then automatically it will be placed accordingly now after selecting the uh, the profile of the hollow core then i want to type the part name as hcs hollow core slab and then the class number as 6 all right and then go to general, and then the depth position, it should be above the beam, this one. All right? And then there are some uh, other uh, functionalities here, but uh, we're not going to touch that one. So if there's some cuts out, but uh, this one is only the basic one. So apply. And then here, my uh, uh, it's still active. The command is still active. Pick three or more points to create the floor layout tool. So if I pick one, two, three, four, and then middle button of your mouse, click middle button of your mouse, then you have now the, the uh, layout of the hollow core. So again, if I undo this one, Or delete all right so again slab so look if i click on the uh if i pick this one on the counterclockwise look uh position so look what will happen you can see the uh the hollow core is on the longitudinal position okay if it is a counterclockwise that's the reason why i put it in the clockwise so i put backspace 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 to make it clockwise Backspace meaning if I select it wrongly, I can put backspace, backspace, so that uh, you can go back to the previous position. So pick this one and then middle button of your mouse, and there you have the hollow core section. <clears throat> All right. So instead of uh, uh, modeling the hollow core one by one, so this floor tool will help us. Even if you are doing a still fabrication if you are going to do the gratings or checkered plate you can also use this grout uh this uh floor tool so it will help you to to uh to allocate those gratings and checkered plates all right so can you uh try this one first try the hollow core all right after this one after the hollow core we're going to add the wall all right 
we're going to add the panel or the precast wall or wall. So let me know once you have done this uh, hollow core, and then we will continue with this uh, concrete wall or precast wall.
Okay, so uh, let's continue. I hope everybody's uh, still following. Uh, if you have any question about this floor tool, then uh, let me know. If not, then I will continue with the uh, with the wall. So the wall is just simple. Uh, and then after that, we're going to add now the details. Details meaning we're going to add the reinforcement and also the connection for our steel. Okay. So if you don't have any further question, then uh, let me continue. So here, if uh, if I want to have a uh, a uh, wall so let's say for example um where can i put the wall okay let me just put the wall on the here at the center so panel select the panel <clears throat> under this panel you can type here uh, 2800 uh yeah 2800 by one two okay maybe change that one to five so if you click from this point to the to this point then you are go and then middle button of your mouse then you you're going to have a panel here right so again from this point to this point then you will have the panel okay actually the panel can be uh the panel can be uh, L-shaped panel. If I click from this point to this, then let's say 1,100 middle button. So that one is the L-shaped panel. Right? If you want to uh, <coughs> to uh, do the copy mirror, you can also do copy mirror. So from this point, copy mirror. So you have the L-shaped panel to the other side. <clears throat> all right so that one is the wall okay so <clears throat> wall is something like a polygon uh, like a poly beam or pol or or a uh, uh yeah poly beam that uh, you can pick many uh points <clears throat> to have a shape of the wall but if you pick two points and then middle button of mouse then meaning that one will be a straight wall all right <clears throat> So uh, now <clears throat> we can now start <clears throat> adding the reinforcement to our uh, to our model. Okay, so let's start adding the reinforcement to our model. So, again, since, our, uh, since we're going to add reinforcement, so enable for us to see the reinforcement inside, so better you can press Control 2 so that you can see what's inside the, uh, the concrete. All right? So, now, from, from your right-hand side, you can see this application and component so kindly select this application and component okay application and component <clears throat> and then kindly type footing so once you type these footings you can see here the pad footing reinforcement once you double click the pad footing reinforcement as you can see here, this one is the uh, component wherein you can specify the parameter, uh, what is the cover thickness, what is the uh, size, the grade of the reinforcement, the spacing, and then the secondary bar, the laser bar, the attributes. So you can change this one according to, the, to your design drawing. Or as, a, or as a detailer, if you know the uh, <clears throat> reinforcement area to fill in, so you can just simply use this tool to add the reinforcement to your uh, footing. So at the moment, I'm going to use the uh, uh, default apply. So here, pick object. All I have to do is to pick this footing and look what will happen. Just simply pick the footing and then I have now the reinforcement inside the footing. 
Okay? So the good thing here, control 2, control 4, solid, control 2, transparent. The good thing here is if I change the size, okay, first, once you have the uh, reinforcement in the footing, if you inquire the cast unit, you can see now the bar bending schedule for this uh, uh, footing, all right? Now, the good thing here is if I change the size of this one to 2,000 by 2,500, enter. So you can see here, automatically, the system will adjust the reinforcement and add the reinforcement according to the size. Okay? So that one is a good thing of the intelligent component. So it will adapt according to the size of the uh, uh, concrete. And then if you inquire this one, as you need, so look, this one is updated. See, it's now 13 and 11. Okay, so I will just undo that one and then continue applying this uh, pad footing. So here, select the pad footing here, select the pad footing, and then select the pad footing. Now, if you want to copy this pad footing to all the uh, footing here, you can just simply select this M. This macro, right? And then copy linear. So copy linear from this point to this point. So copy to, there you go. So here you have already the pad footing for this, this uh, concrete. All right. So now, um, uh, kindly add this pad footing to your footing, this pad footing reinforcement to your footing. And then for your exercise, I want you to add also the starter bar to your footing. Okay. So I want you to add pad footing and then the starter bar. So meaning uh, using this pad footing number 77 and 87, you just simply select the pad footing and then you can adjust. Let's say, for example, for the starter bar. Uh, try to to adjust the location of the reinforcement. So that one is your uh, simple exercise before I move on to the concrete column. Okay, so can you do that one now? All right, so I will give you time to, to do that, maybe uh, five minutes to do that. And then after that, then we will continue on adding the reinforcement to the column okay i'm going to discuss the starter bar and then continue adding the reinforcement to the column so uh kindly proceed to the uh addition adding of the reinforcement and then let me know once you have done or maybe i'll give you five minutes to do it
Okay, so uh, ready to continue? Did you manage to add the uh, the reinforcement for the uh, footing? All right, very good. So now, uh, okay. So the next one is I'm going to uh, add the uh, the starter bar. Okay. So look, if I pick, if I select the starter bar and use the default one, look what will happen. The starter bar is out of the column so what i need to do is to change the location here for it 350 and then 350 and then modify so there you go so that one will be inside uh the column so this is the connection between the the footing and then the column because this one is a cip so now uh i can simply select all the uh oh, sorry I'll select, uh, I will get the value here and then select this one and then modify, apply and okay. And then select the pad footing, select the pad footing. Okay, so now, um, after that, kindly type number 83, okay? Remember that one, number 83 or rectangular column reinforcement. Since I know the code, so I just simply type 83, but you can type rectangular column reinforcement. Just double click on this. And then here you can see the uh, the size of the main part, main bar, the uh, sidebar, and then the stirrups, the spacing of the stirrups. If you want to change it to 200, change to 200, apply. And then here, select the column. And then as you can see here, the column will be placed correctly here in our first floor. Okay, I can use the same uh, column reinforcement on the second floor because my aim, our aim here, our goal is to put the reinforcement on this line A. Okay, this line A. All right. So there you go. So uh, kindly uh, do the uh, add the rectangular column, all right? Add the rectangular column. And then uh, after you add the rectangular column, then we're going, I'm going to show you how we're going to cut this beam according to the surface of the column, all right? So add the column first, the rectangular column reinforcement, and then we're going to cut the beam here, all right? Because this one is the CIP, the first floor. The second floor, uh, we're going to add the core bell, okay? So kindly do that one first, the column. So I'll give you again three minutes to do that one. And then uh, we will continue uh, with other details.
Okay, so uh, let's uh, continue. I think uh, I think from from this time, uh, let me let me just go through the uh, uh, thing of all the uh, reinforcement. Okay, so uh, you can just simply uh, watch it, and then maybe later on you can follow the video once I uh, uh, share to you the video because uh, uh, we don't have much time because I want to show you also how we create the. Uh, uh, the drawing out of this model. Okay, so from from now on, I'm going to uh, start uh, adding the the details until we finish the details up to the the steel, and then uh, maybe uh, for you, you can just simply follow that one offline. Okay, so that at least uh, we we finish this uh, this model with all the details. All right. So now. Now that we have this uh, beam connected to the column, so I need to do the cutting. So using the uh, battering, I type the battering connection, this one. So by simply selecting the column and then selecting the, uh, the beam, look what will happen. It will cut according to the surface of the column. So select the column and beam, column and beam column and beam column and beam column and beam so again don't forget about this uh, connection number 13 battering to cut the beam according to the surface of the column So sorry about that. So now, uh, let me continue. Now this time, this time I'm going to uh, add the uh, the reinforcement for this beam. So again, for the reinforcement for this beam, uh, earlier I, I've shown you how to isolate the uh, the view. Let's say, for example, I want to show only this particular element that I selected. So right click. Press the shift key and then show show only selected. So now I can just simply select the uh, 90, connection number 90. So connection number 90 is the rebar in beam. If you double click on this one, this is something like a, a, a component for the reinforcement. So meaning I will I simply select the beam and then the position. And then you can extend the reinforcement to the column. So if I select the beam, so if I apply this one, or maybe this one is, uh, I will type here uh, maybe uh, 80. 80. So apply and OK. So if I select this beam and then pick the position 1, 2, so look what will happen. So there will be, sorry, yeah, so look, the beam, the reinforcement will be uh, inside the column. So if I continue with that one, so select this beam and select the position, select the beam and select the position. All right. So. There you go. Now, if I redraw, it will show you the, the reinforcement here. See? So that is the reinforcement. Okay. So after this, uh, that one now is the, uh, the CIP. And then here at the top, this one, I did not cut this beam, but uh, I'm going to use a Corbel connection. Corbel. So if I select the Corbel connection, so you can have a different uh, a different uh, shape of the Corbel, whether it is rectangular, trapezoid, or the round. So I'll use this one. So select the column and then the beam. Look what will happen. Automatically, it will give me the Corbel. So if we want to change the color of the Corbel according to the uh, uh, same color of the column, so I just change this class under the Corbel. So apply. 
apply and then select the core bell. Pick the column and beam, column and beam. So select the column and beam, column and beam, column and beam. And then there you go. So you have now the core bell connection. Now, if the uh, if you want to have a core bell going up, so let's say for example this one and this core bell, you want to put here uh, 150, move up, modify, so it will cut the beam like this. So you can select all the core bell, and then if you want to move that one up, move. So there will be a 150 cutouts to the beam. All right. Now for the uh, for the beam reinforcement here, I can use now number 63. Okay, the beam reinforcement here. So now let's say I'm going to uh, select this and then show only selected. All right. So look, if I select this beam, since this one is a precast, select the beam, select the beam, and then select the beam. And then you will notice that uh, here, we need to have more reinforcement at the end to reinforce the, the, the end part of this, call, uh, of this beam. So all you have to do is to type end, end beam end reinforcement. So here, to add more reinforcement to the end, just simply select simply apply pick the part and then pick the position so as you notice here pick the part pick the position part and then the position part position and as you can see here there will be additional reinforcement to strengthen the edge of the concrete there now this one is uh, quite good because uh, automatically the reinforcement will react if there's some cutouts here okay and then right click redraw to see the reinforcement again in the whole model okay so we're done with this one now um, the next thing to do is uh, you can now add the connection between the call the base plate and the column so we we are going to add now the details in the column okay as a base plate so what we're going to do is uh okay before before i move to the column is there any uh question is there any question on this any question is it clear Okay, very good. So now let, let me continue. Okay, let me continue. So uh, here, I'm going to add the, uh, the steel connection. Okay, in this case, I think I, I can uh, uh, ask you to, to follow the, the steel so that you, you will feel how to add the steel connection. Huh? Okay, so anyway, we still have time. So for the steel connection, I want you to... Uh, Type here base, okay, base, this one, double click the base plate. And then as you can see here, you have the parts, you have the parameter, you have the bolts, the anchor rod, and extra plate and so on. So I, I'll just simply use the, the default value, apply, and then select the column, and then select the position, and you have now the base plate, see? You have the base plate here. Okay. Yeah. So select the column and then select the position and then you have the base plate. You can try that one. So again, here, you type here base plate and then select the column and pick the position and then you have the base plate. Okay. Maybe I'll give you a couple of minutes to try that one. Again, select the base plate. Select the column and then select the position and then you're going to have the base plate. Okay, kindly do that one. 
and then after that i'll show you the uh, the apex connection Okay, so uh, let's uh, continue. So I think that one should be easy. Now, uh, let's move on to the uh, connection at the IB. Okay, so all you have to do is to type here IB, and then you can see here uh, IB connection. Ah, oh, sorry, not IB, but uh, Apex, this one, Apex hunch. So meaning, by simply, uh, you can specify again the parameters here parameters bolts and so on number of bolts all you have to do is to select the first raptor and then the second raptor and then you have the apex connection so as you select first one two one two one and then two then you have the apex connection all right and then uh, for this one the connection at the plunge of the column so I can use the IB. <clears throat> so here, if I, uh, okay. So under this IB connection, you can just simply uh, change first the, uh, the parameters. So let's say this one, I don't want to have a diagonal cut or slope cut, straight one. And then here I'll put 350 and then, uh, Hunch, then let's say this one is 2 into uh, 70, and then this one is 150. Apply and OK. Then pick the column and pick the beam, and there you go. So you have now this uh, EB connection between the column and the wrap belt. Right? Now, we draw so that uh, you can uh, clean up the, uh, the model. So this is the uh, uh, this is the connection for the uh, steel steel part. Okay, this is the connection for the steel part. All right. So now that we have the uh, uh, we have this connection and details. All right. So the next thing that we do is, especially when if we want to produce a uh, fabrication drawing. So if you notice here, if I inquire cast unit, so look, the cast position number is B0 and then the question mark. So meaning the system is not yet uh, assigning the piece mark to the element because we haven't done the uh, 
the numbering yet. So now, now that we are going to add the numbering or perform the numbering, so if you notice here, there's a, the reinforcement for the beam. Everything is here. So once we have the, uh, the numbering, so that beam, uh, the system will assign the piece marking for this beam and for the other elements. So to, to run the numbering, okay, I want you to go to this drawing and reports here, drawing and reports, and then perform numbering, and then numbered modified objects. So select this one. There you go. That's it. So numbering complete. So look, if I inquire this one again, oh, sorry. If I inquire this cast unit again, so this one is B3. See? B3. Total number in model. So there are three B3 on this model. Okay. And then here, this is the bar bending schedule. You have, you have the marking of the rebar. All right. As well as the steel, if I select this one, inquire uh, assembly. So you can see here B6. And these are the uh, connecting parts to the column. All right. So now we are ready to create the drawing. So for the drawing, maybe you can follow this one as well. Uh, run the numbering, and then we are going to create the drawing. So to create the drawing is this. At least you can. Uh, you can feel how to create the drawing in this model. So go to the drawing property. Oh, okay. So here under the docu document manager, the drawing will be, the drawing that we're going to create will be placed here. Okay. And then under the drawing properties, select the cast unit drawing and then set up the rebar. So meaning we're going to create a rebar drawing first. Okay. Apply and okay. And then select one of the beam, right click, and then here, again, uh, select one of the beam, right click on the beam, and then create drawing, cast unit drawing. Okay, so once you click on the cast unit drawing, and there you go. So this one now is the cast unit drawing. So look, we, I, I do not do and I, I did not do anything here, but the system create this one for us automatically. So here you have the beam drawing, you have the shape, you have the uh, reinforcement, you have the piece marking of the reinforcement, the dimensions. Here you have the dimensions, dimensions of the, uh, the beam. You have the sections. If you press B as in boy, uh, it becomes black and white. And then the best thing here is the bar bending schedule. Okay. You want to try this uh, a drawing? Kindly uh, follow that instruction. Again, uh, uh, what I did here is just simply, okay, follow this instruction. Simply select drawing properties and then cast unit drawing and then select the rebar and then load and then apply okay then select one of the beam right click and then here you can here create cast unit drawing so once you click cast unit drawing then it will create this cast unit drawing so i want you to uh, to try that one yeah try it so that you can see now the bar bending schedule placement there. Then after that, okay, I, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. After that, we're going to create the assembly drawing for the structural steel.
Okay, so uh, let's uh, do the uh, the steel. Okay, I'm going to close this one. So this time, uh, for the steel, it's the same thing. We need to go to the drawing properties, and this time it's assembly drawing. So for the assembly drawing, I need to select the column plus part, and then apply, and okay. So look, if I select one of this column and then right click on it, and then create drawing, assembly drawing, so look what will happen. Again, I'm not going to draw that one manually, one by one. So here, assembly drawing documents. So here it will create the column drawing. Yeah, column drawing. So if you notice here, the fitting dimensions are there, the uh, the detailed dimensions for the cutout of the base plate, the steepener, okay? Everything are there. And then if you want to add more, uh, uh, more dimension, that one is also can. You can still uh, go to this dimensioning and then add here. So you can still add more dimension as you like. You can also change the, uh, uh, the style of the dimensions. If you want to use the arrow, then use the arrow here. Something like this. Yeah, so if you want to use the uh, uh, circle, modify something like this, or open arrow. So you can also change the style of the font. So this is, uh, this is the assembly drawing. And then look, the bill of material will be automatically calculated here. <laughs> right? And uh, lastly, lastly, uh, we can also create the uh, uh, the GA drawing or the erection drawing. So GA drawing, let's say, uh, for example, I want to create the, the drawing for this 3D, the first floor plan, and then the elevation at A. So here, create drawing properties, uh, create uh, GA drawing. So if you... Look onto this one, 3D, section A, and first floor. But before you create the section A and first floor, uh, make it sure that the uh, grid A and the first floor are already are in the plane, okay, are in the plane. Because if this one is rotated like this, then it will create also the drawing similar to this position. So make it sure that that one is on plane, okay, this one is good, on plane. Okay, now it's ready, 3D. Grid A, and then first floor plan, open the drawing, and then create. So look what will happen. Automatically, the system will create the drawing for us. Oh, what, where is this one? Um, ah, okay. Wait, 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 wait. I think there's something wrong. So let me just uh, again create the drawing because there I think there's something wrong in the setting. So document delete the uh, drawing this one. So again I'm going to open the first floor and then grid A. So first floor uh, and then pitwork area. Pitwork area. And then this one is fit work area. Okay. So let's see again. Create GA drawing. Three. GA and then first floor. And then create. Uh -huh. Okay. There you go. So there's something a little bit. Uh, okay. Now, the thing is, in this case, okay, if you want to remove this hatch, you can always uh, remove the hatch from here. Ah, sorry. Uh, from the part. And then here, you simply remove this. Put it none and then modify. Okay. And then uh, if you want to have something like a 
uh, spot detail, okay? So let's say, for example, in this case, we, we want to have a spot detail. All you have to do is to go to the view and then detail view. Uh, sorry, view, detail view, like this. And then put it here. So since this one is a detail view, you can change the, the scale. Instead of 1 is to 100, you can change to uh, maybe 1 is to... Uh, a bigger size, maybe one is to twenty. If if it is okay, then apply, and okay. So once you apply, meaning when you create again a new uh, detail, that will be the same uh, setting. So here, if I extend this one, and then of course since this one is a detail, so we can just simply again uh, show the reinforcement of this. So here you can go to this reinforcement and then turn, make it visible, and then double lines, appearance, and then modify. Okay, so there you go. So you can see that there, the reinforcement will be uh, will be shown here. Now the good thing here is once you have this reinforcement here in the GA, you can also Select and right click, add mark. See here, you can see that this one is 12D8. You can uh, select this one and then add, add part mark. And then you can see 3, 10. So something like uh, you can easily add the uh, annotation here. And then if you want to have a uh, section, section view from here to here. Okay, there you go. And then put it here. So this one will be the section view. And then the good thing with this section view, if I move down the section view, so this one will be updated. Okay. So let's say only this. There you go. And if you want to add some dimensions, you can just simply add the dimensions here. And then for the annotation, again, you can just simply select, select, and then select, right click, and then add mark using applied. So there will be an annotation. No need for you to type in one by one because it will, it can, it can uh, tell you what is the uh, part marking of this uh, element in the detail. So this is the, uh, this is the drawing that we can create in Tecla structure. One is the uh, cast unit drawing. The assembly drawing and then the uh, GA drawing, which is the uh, erection drawing. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think uh, this is the one that uh, I mean. Again, uh, uh, this workshop is something like uh, I mean, it's not totally a detailed uh, training, as as you can see. I mean, uh, uh, usually our training, uh, our training days is uh, four, uh, four, four days training, extensive uh, training. Okay, that one is something like four days, uh, uh, eight hours a day training. And this this one, we managed to create the uh, the model and the drawing in uh, in less than three hours. Okay. And uh, again, this one is just an introductory uh, uh, workshop for you guys, especially if you don't have any idea what Tecla structure is. So uh, now, if you have any question, uh, let me know. Is there any question before we end this session? So again, this workshop is just an introduction workshop. So there's a lot more that uh, you can uh, uh, get in Tecla Structure, but of course, this one is just a beginning. If you want further information, then you can always uh, contact us. Uh, I will just uh, keep in touch with you. And uh, uh, yes, uh, Miss Marie, I will, uh, for sure, I will uh, uh, contact you. And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, also, uh, I will uh, I will um, give you some what you call that a feedback form. I will send through the email to the email that I've sent you. Uh, 
kindly uh, help us to uh, uh, to give us your uh, feedback, uh, what you feel about the uh, software, and then uh, 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 yeah. So just give us the feedback, uh, whether it's uh, bad or good. So at least uh, we know where we can uh, improve, and uh, it will help us a lot. And also uh, later, I'm go. Uh, I will ask you to join our. Uh, uh, I will. I will also ask you to join our LinkedIn group. Then all the updates that we have, especially those who attended the workshop. So we're going to add some updates on that one. So we will keep you post posted. Okay. So if you don't have any more question, uh, Miss Marie, yes, we will. Uh, con uh, we will uh, for sure uh, give you a. Uh, we will contact you soon. Um, uh, how about the other guys? Uh, Anushka, yeah, thank you very much, Miss Marie. Uh, Anushka and uh, the other guy, uh, Chamitra. So I hope uh, you get something useful from uh, from us today. Okay. So yeah. So. Okay, so if there's no other uh, question and other concern, I will just keep you uh, posted. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the uh, the, the time that you spent for us. Yeah, so uh, I know that this one is a weekend, but uh, thank you for the time and uh, the support that you have given to us. So I'll, I'll just keep you posted and I'll keep in touch with you. Okay, thank you very much. See you. See you soon again. Thank you. And bye-bye.